Has anyone heard the phrase blind cahoot before? OK. Very soon, we're going to be meeting the person that coined that phrase. But what we're going to do here is play a game of Kahoot to introduce things which are brand new, or at least we think they're going to be brand new. So this is a way of teaching new concepts through facilitating a game of Kahoot. Um, so I'm going to invite Stephanie up to the stage now. I first met Stephanie a year ago. I went into her school in New York, the United Nations International School. and. She very excitedly told me, I'm going to show you today a blind kahoot. And I didn't know what a blind kahoot was. So do you want to explain to everyone here, in your words, what a blind kahoot sure. is? Um, so um, I'm going to give credit, essentially, uh, way back when to a colleague of mine who, I don't know how many of you, how many of you have Promethean and the Promethean clickers. Mm -hmm. But um, he had said, oh, well, you know, I've, I've set up these questions on the Promethean board. And I'm going to teach oxidation numbers. So I'm, I'm a high school bio teacher. I also teach chemistry. Um, and we're teaching an awful lot of the time some very complex processes. And uh, I said, oh, OK, well, that's interesting. Um, and I had just learned about Kahoot. And previously, I was very much using it for you know, review. And here's a set of questions. <coughs> and let's review this. Um, and at that moment, my thinking started to change very much so. And I thought, well, wait a second. What if we could use it to completely introduce a topic that they had never seen before? And so we started using it with oxidation numbers in chemistry. And then being a bio teacher, um, I then started to use it to introduce concepts in biology. And the most recent one that uh, I think they featured recently was uh, actually took place last week. And I did a blind kahoot to teach the concepts of mitosis. And so the, the, the concept of a blind, blind kahoot is that we, we, we can structure our kahoots very much like we structure our lessons plans. So when you think about designing a lesson, you think about the kind of questions that you're going to ask your students. And based on their responses, what is your next question going to be to either reinforce that or to uh, question as a form of formative assessment? Then you can structure your kahoot in a very similar fashion. The concept is that you start the Kahoot where they don't know anything beforehand. So the first question is always a very interesting one, because if they don't know anything beforehand, they're, they're essentially guessing. And if you have a classroom full of 24 kids, they're looking at you going, miss. <laughs> well, the interesting thing I found about that when I was there was that actually no one got it right. But I think you told me you, you, you call that a leveler. Yeah, so um, the first question is kind of, I, I say it levels the playing field, because uh, if if there's a number of you that have played it before, you know that you've got kids in the class that are consistently at the top, and then have kids that consistently maybe don't get on the leaderboard. But if you do a blind kahoot and you're starting with something they've never seen before, then the first question completely levels the playing field. Nobody, nobody knows what to answer. And then all of the questions from that point forward are informed by the previous question. So the key to designing something like a blind kahoot is very much in the structure in the kind of question you ask, and in particular, the order in which you ask them. So one of the things that I considered when I looked at the Kahoot that I did last week, and I looked at the results, I realized that there are actually four categories of the kinds of questions that I structure it with. So the first one is, is an introductory kind of question that sets a context for the kids. So I don't know how many people are science teachers, but mitosis is a form of cell division. <laughs> so my first question was, you know, mitosis is, um, and set the context so they knew what they were dealing with. Um, then you have the blind questions, which are the ones that they, they know nothing. They, they have to guess, most of them. They may guess right, they may <coughs> guess wrong. You can then take a moment to inform as to why the right answer was the right answer. And thus, you have shared a piece of information. Following a blind question directly is always a reinforcing question. So it follows directly off the blind question. It gives them an opportunity to apply what they have just learned to that. And if you continue to structure that as you get towards the end of the coup, so it's maybe 20 questions, if that, 20 to 30, then towards the end, you can have what I, what I coined as compound reinforcing questions, or otherwise like application, <laughs> um, which is where you may have taught two or three concepts blindly. So in the case of mitosis, I taught them what a chromosome is, what a chromatid is, and so on and so forth. I got to the end, and I said, OK, based on all of these things, what's this? <coughs> and so you're asking to apply several different concepts that you've learned previously in a culminating question. And through about 20 to 30 questions, um, we've managed to teach oxidation numbers, um, mitosis, a whole range of processes. But it's all in the planning. It's all in the planning and the structure of the game. I can quote you. You said 10 or 20 questions later, they know the topic inside out from scratch. 
uh, which I actually saw happen, and it was amazing. Um, can you talk a bit more about the creation of the game? Because one of the things I noticed was how you used this kind of repetition or scaffolding, particularly through the imagery you created. Yeah, so um, the example that I'm referring to, the Cell Division one, um, you know, the, the beginning wasn't actually sitting in front of the, t the Kahoot creation scheme. The beginning was I sat down with a bunch of pieces of paper because the classic way of teaching that is, oh, here's a series of diagrams, they're in this order, so on and so forth. So I thought, well, if I was trying to describe these diagrams, what would be the order of my questioning? What would the first thing be that I would want them to know? And if they know that, then what could they answer thereafter? So if they know this is a chromosome, I give them another question. Could they tell me that that's two, two chromosomes, or are they gonna, you know, they're gonna answer something different? I mean, it's a very simple progression. The progression is not complex. Um, and so it started with me producing a sequence of diagrams. All I did was screenshot all of them, and that became my sequence of questions. But it's really important that within that sequence, whenever you answer a blind question, it's always followed by a question that allows them to reinforce and apply that information. So they get the blind question wrong, they learn something from that, and they apply it to the next one. And that's how the learning takes place throughout the Kahoot as the game is played. So more on the playing side, can you talk about how you facilitate that? Because one of the things I noticed is that Obviously, as the game progresses, you can tell which students are starting to grasp it before the other ones. Yeah. I remember you, you asked those students to be explaining it. Yeah, for sure. Um, whenever I share a blank who, the, the group that did it last week, you're going to hear from some of my students in a minute, God bless them. Um, <laughs> I, I do always tell them, first of all, we're going to play a blank who. So, because otherwise, they're, they're taken a little by surprise. They think they should know the, the first question, right? Um, what is a blank who? Uh, so I tell them, well, I'm not going to tell you anything. <laughs> that doesn't always go down well. Um, but uh, as you go through and the results come up on the board, you can ask those students who have applied correctly to say, okay, well, why did you choose that? So you were alluding to this, you know, in between, you have this discussion as to why did you make that choice? In what way did you apply your previous information to, to deduce what I've been asking you here? Um, as the game goes on as well, you want to keep track of those kids that you might be losing. So we all know, you know, we have classes of 24, 30, 20, whatever, whatever class we're in. It's possible that you can lose students through this. So as the game goes on, in between each question, I give a very short commentary, maybe 30 seconds if that. This is why this was correct, so just to establish. And in later questions, I have started giving kind of an opt-out, so one of the four options is my head hurts, or <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> um, and then I get kind of a tag when, when the results come up. Um, if I see a few hitting that, then I know it's kind of a, a desperate, I, I'm really lost, and, and I then know to facilitate a bit further than maybe I have been. So it is kind of trial and error. You do monitor your class as you go through, but then as I said, we do that as educators through our lessons anyway. It's just that you're using the Kahoot to facilitate that learning in a way that you might not have been doing before. So Stephanie doesn't see herself as a game designer, but to us, she's very much thinking how game designers think. She's building a narrative and a story through her Kahoot, and then the way she guides it is how a game is guided. You, you want people to feel success at various points, but you also need to provide challenges within that, and that's how games progress. So before we show the video of her students, do you want to just explain that this was yeah. definitely not scripted? Yeah, no, um, so I knew that I was going to come and share this idea this week. You know, I think as educators, when we latch onto something that really alters the way that our students learn in the classroom, you very much want to share that with fellow educators. And I had said to my students, we played it on my toasters last week, I said, look, you know, I'm going to play this, this is how you're going to learn my toast. And when I'm away next week, you're going to make an animation, So just so you know. Um, and I said, oh, by the way, if any of you mind being interviewed at the end, they'd really like to hear from you because your voice matters more than anyone else's. Oh, what do you want us to say? I, said, I don't know. Say whatever comes to your mind, just have a conversation with me. So it was all of a five-minute conversation. I just held the iPhone right there. Um, but it is heartwarming what they said, and in many ways, um, kind of a relief, <laughs> because I heard them say these things and I thought, well that's awesome that they had that experience. So it is very um, candid, but welcome to my students. 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 No, my 
had, like, I've never heard of them before. I, I had no idea what it was. Prior to the yeah. coup, I had not studied mitosis. No, no I've never studied mitosis before. I've never yeah. studied mitosis. It was definitely at the start pretty challenging, I think. That but yeah, but the questions were, they were like easier to understand. Yeah, yeah. they were looking at a diagram, yeah. so it was, it was easier. Yeah. But we, we had to get the gist of it. Yeah. yeah, it took a couple questions to get into like a rhythm. And it was a bit stressful and confusing at first, but then as it went on, we just got the hang of it and it became easier. Yeah, because we, I, I, I didn't know what it was going to be on since I've never studied it before. So I was kind of nervous, but as the Kahoot went on, I then got the idea of it, and each question followed, like, the answer to this question followed the next question, so I kind of got the, I, under, I started understanding it. It kind of built on every question was followed by something that was related to it, and you could determine what the answer to the next question was based on what we yeah. answered in the last one. Well, since each question was built off the last one, we were able to add that knowledge to answer the next question. And definitely even like kind of, we kind of knew what kind of information to retain because uh, we got the gist of it as well. And there are also like uh, different sections for like new parts of this, uh, parts of mitosis, like there were different parts of the Yeah, right. stages. Yeah. It was nice that we, like if I got a question wrong the first time, like the next question would be related to it, but it wouldn't be the same, but you'd still be able to like fix your mistake, I guess. So. Better, because I had the knowledge to fill it out. We already had the doing it. Yeah. Fine. And we already had the sort of vocabulary. Okay. Yeah. And I felt like I understand the process. Um, maybe like I could use some going over it. Um, and just asking some specific questions, but I got the general idea. Yeah, um, taking the Kahoot before we did the activity, um, I think it was easier for me, because I then, the Kahoot made, like, I explained it easier, I, I then understood everything that was happening, so it, the activity was very easy for me. If I could just add a little bit to the end there, um, to share with you the activity they did afterwards, the classic is to put the sequence of diagrams in order for that process. Um, so I did give that to them directly afterwards, so there's no direct teaching on my part, it was a Kahoot and then it was that. And I'm prepared to put myself out there, I just thought of this, um, that while I'm here this week, um, those same students have been asked to animate it using stop motion. So they had one lesson where half was the coup and the second half was putting the diagrams um, together with annotations. And then this week they uh, were asked to animate it based off of that one lesson. They're having three lessons this week that I'm not here. I'm not with them. Um, and I am quite happy to share that work. They've all uh, allowed me to share their interview and their work. Um, so if you're interested in following me at Castle Stephanie on Twitter, I will tweet out those animations that they have put together. And you now know the background. You know it was one lesson with a Kahoot and an activity following it and then I'm not there this week so what they produce at the end is, a, is essentially as a result of that one lesson where we did the blind Kahoot. And what's interesting about this is we're going to demonstrate the new creator later and that's designed mobile first. So one of the best things you can do is take photos of anything around you which could be drawings that you've done yourself and embed them directly into your Kahoot. And if you do try it yourself, hashtag blank who, I'd love to see other examples of what everyone else is teaching. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you.